coast of Sydney are the Blue Mountains. It's a stunning landscape that for many years was an impassable barrier. Today, it's a playground for tourists and runners alike. It's the latter of the two that have really made this dramatic terrain their own. And each May, they arrive in the town of Katoomba en masse for the North Face 100. My name is uh, Stone Zhang from Hong Kong. I hope this year, I hope this race um, is a fast race. Yeah? Um, I hopefully I can finish um, before the sunset. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, it's so exciting to get here and and cannot wait to the race. <laughs> bueno, después de los tres días que llevo viendo el recorrido de la Blue Mountain, pues me parece espectacular. Rompe un poco con lo con lo normal de las carreras europeas, no. Eh, son muchas pistas y Bueno, senderos con mucha vegetación, ¿no? What I'm looking forward to most this year is I'm just giving it my best, giving it my all, um, which I, I think I try and do every year. Um, and whatever position that'll get me, well, so be it. But hopefully that'll be up close to the front somewhere. But um, yeah, just giving it my best. I'll go out conservatively. 100 Ks is a, is a long day. Um, and particularly with the uphill finish and the, the fact that the second half of the course seems to be more challenging than the first half, I'll uh, just run a measured race, uh, at least through halfway, see how things are playing out at that point. I certainly hope to contend for, you know, a podium position, so I'll do whatever I can to be in the mix there. Um, but really, I try not to go into the race with any set plan. I try and be loose and, and figure those things out on the fly. Uh, I've run this race three times now, and um, it was the first ultra I did back in 2012. Uh, so in the last three years, I've come third, third, and then second last year. Um, so getting better every year, getting closer to the front, and uh, yeah, hopefully get one better this year. This is amazing. It smells my heart. Uh, look at this. So beautiful. The night before, and the event expo is a hive of activity. Runners gather at the convention centre to do their final gear checks, look at the sponsors' displays, check in, and hear the race briefing. It's a very social affair, full of countless reunions with running buddies that you seem to only ever cross paths with on the trails. One of the highlights of the night is the Welcome to Country by local Indigenous representative David King. My name is David King. I'm the uh, son of Aunty Mary King. I'm a Gandangra man. My mum was born right in this area, in the gully. Aunty Mary King did the blood draw on me tonight and stayed in bed at the old people's home. Went to pick her up, she was a bit tired. I mean, hey, there's a lot of people up there. They're going to be tired tomorrow. <laughs> Race day arrives with a crisp morning, the darkness being broken by flickering headlamps. The usual peace and quiet of the mountains is filled with the murmurs of nervous runners and the announcers counting down the minutes. It's the calm before the storm, where tension fills the air in anticipation of what's about to happen. There's a tangible sense of excitement that's somewhat infectious. Even as a spectator, the nerves start to tingle. In the final moments before the first wave of runners set sail, things get serious. There's no going back now. The course goes from Katoomba through rugged terrain down to the Megalong Valley before returning to town just beyond the halfway point. From here, they head along the cliff tops to Queen Victoria Hospital, then plunge into the Kadumba Valley prior to the steep uphill journey to the finish line. It's a tough way to finish a race. As wave one gets underway, other competitors await the start of their group. No matter when you begin the race, the excitement and this energy is just the same for both the runners and their support group. Seven kilometres in, and all the favourites were together, including Dylan Bowman, Yang Lon Fei, Andrew Tucky, Scott Hawker, and Francois Dane. 
the chase pack also had several other contenders keenly in pursuit. This part of the course features a highly technical stretch that traverses a rough, boulder-strewn path. It's the first real test for the runners and requires absolute concentration. For the middle of the pack, it's steady as she goes. There's a long day ahead. So at this point, it's about settling into a rhythm and moving cautiously through the rocks. One wrong step could easily lead to serious injury and an early end to the day. up with the leading group on their way down the famed Glen Raphael Drive. Through the clearing mist we could see Perna Tamang of Nepal ahead of Julian Corrier, Yan Long Fei and Ludovic Lancelot. All of them were moving with purpose as the clouds and fog slowly started to burn off over the Megalong Valley. But with plenty of miles left to go, the race was still wide open. as the 50 kilometre race was about to begin. The distance of this race might be half the longer one, but it comes with added intensity, and from the gun there's a noticeable difference in the speed of the runners. Heading the field early was Danny Andres, who skipped away to a small lead ahead of Andreas Ramonis, Luke Preston and Henri Coombs. Our leading lady was Sydney local Emma Ryland, who looked to be having the time of her life. The 50 kilometre course essentially follows the second half of the 100, once again leaving the hardest part for last. The elevation profile is intimidating to say the least, and it's the smart runners that typically fare the best. Back out at Narrow Neck and the front in the 100 remained unchanged with America's Dylan Bowman and Francois Dane of France in hot pursuit of the lead four. Small gaps separated the chasers with Scott Hawker ahead of John O'Loughlin and Andrew Tucky. Here we also catch up with the women's leader and find Cassie Scallon from the United States forcing the pace. This is one of the most scenic and fun parts of the course. The stunning views of Narrow Neck give way to an epic descent down to the valley floor. It's a highly technical section with stairs, ropes and ladders, testing your metal and fatiguing legs. The early arrivals quickly skip through, with the midfield using it as an opportunity to gather themselves before the next leg. so much fun. Woohoo! So we're about 21k's in at the top of the, almost at the terrace ladders, so yeah, nice, nice spot for a break. While the field of the 100 continue their way down the ropes and ladders, at the front of the 50 is Andreas Ramonis, keenly being pursued by Matty Abel, always happy to smile for the cameras. Next through in third is a fast-moving Luke Preston. It wasn't much later that our first woman, Emma Ryland, also passed by the 10-kilometre point, with Wes Gibson clearing the way. On the other side of the mountain range, we catch up with Cassie Scallon, who was holding onto a narrow lead entering the Dunphy's camp checkpoint at 31 kilometres. Hot on her heels was China's Dong Li, who was in and out of the aid station in a matter of seconds. In third was a relaxed Amy Sproston. What's your plan for the rest of the race? Just hang in there. From here, competitors head out along Iron Pot Ridge. Being an out and back section, Runners cross paths, allowing the front of the field to get an idea of the lead they have on their chases. Unfortunately though, it was here that major drama unfolded, with the front four taking a wrong turn. In the heat of battle, they had missed a course marker and not completed the return journey. It meant a time penalty would be enforced that fundamentally altered the state of play. There was a little loop 
Yeah. And there's a clearly marked turn where we were supposed to do the loop. Yeah. And when we saw the turn, we took it. Because, and there was a marshal there, but she was up above us and she didn't, she wasn't there to like tell us which way to go. So you've been held back? So we got to hang out for a few minutes. Inheriting the top spot was New Zealand's Scott Hawker, an experienced campaigner who resides in Katoomba and knows the course well. Being aware the penalised runners would be in hot pursuit made for lots of pressure, and with more than half the race remaining, it was still wide open. For spectators, it meant for an exciting finish. Second into checkpoint three was last year's runner-up Andrew Tucky, who, after a quick refill and brief from his support crew, headed off. Sydney sider John O'Loughlin followed a minute or so later. Meanwhile, race director Tom Landon-Smith was going through the process of calculating when our penalised athletes would be able to resume running. It was a stressful wait for the athletes who were desperate to get back into the race. <laughs> okay, off you go, guys. Good work, guys. Good work, guys. to the 50 and reaching the Queen Victoria Hospital and with 22 kilometres left to run was Lithuanian Andreas Romanus. He'd extended his lead significantly and looked to have the race already sewn up. Luke Preston had moved up a position to second but looked to be suffering a little. Next along was Matty Abel who too was starting to lose the pep in his step. At the 30 kilometre point, still out in front of the women's field, was Emma Ryland, her smile now a grimace. A kilometre behind was Jessica Carroll, with Kiwi Tanya Copeland chasing. At the 57 kilometre mark, and still heading the ladies in the 100, was Cassie Scallon, who arrived at the Aquatic Centre checkpoint well ahead of her rival. Second place, Dong Lee came and went in a flash, knowing that a quick transition through the aid stations would mean easy time made up on the leader. Along the cliff tops at around the 65 kilometre mark, and things were really starting to heat up in the men's field. Our chasers had breached the gap to Scott, and now it was a pack of four. A new contender had also emerged, with Yun Yang Chao of China in fifth. still had several hours ahead of them. The first of the 50 competitors was crossing the finish. Andreas had crushed the opposition. Still climbing further steps was Luke Preston. Cramping meant for a hard grind to the top and left it open for someone to emerge from behind and grab second place. In third and moving nicely was Richard Banks, who had powered home and in the final half hour closed the gap to the front quite considerably. Down in the valley, and our first lady was power hiking up the stairs. The distant cheering of the crowd and voice of the announcer echoing through the trees a welcome sounds. Meanwhile, Richard Banks rounded out the men's podium. Eventually crossing the line more than 13 minutes ahead of her nearest rival, and eighth overall was Emma Ryland. Flying home in second was Jessica Carroll, who clearly had plenty left in the tank. Rounding out the women's podium was visiting New Zealander Tanya Copeland.
late afternoon brings with it a change in the mood of the mountains. It becomes even more peaceful and the colours more vibrant. But for those still racing, it's not a time to relax. Leading the women in the 100, we now had two runners, with Dong Lee and Cassie together along the clifftop. In pursuit was Amy Sproston, who looked to be finding form. But there's still a long way to go. Arriving at checkpoint five, and it was a race in two. Dylan and Yan had gapped the others, and quickly through the aid station, Yan had grabbed a few seconds on his rival, who took the time to rehydrate, refuel, and get the lowdown on the final section of the course. Two hours, man, two hours, 20. 2.20. Perhaps the best looking in the field was Scott Hawker, who rolled in with a huge smile across his face. He was having a great day out and knew the final climb very well. Uh, this one, Scotty. Five. Yeah, and I will take that. A little bit of protein. Mm. Don't scull it. It's game on now. Okay. Game on. Smash it, babe. Give it everything you've got. Just a half yeah. marathon. Where are you going? Smash it. Oh, 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 oh. The Kadumba Valley is a long and hard descent, but it's also very picturesque. Those at the back of the 50km race were still making their way through as the front of the 100 field was plunging down the mountain, moving at an incredible rate, even after more than 80 kilometres of hard racing. It's inspiring stuff to see. Dylan Bowman had managed to finally break Yan, who was starting to look very shaky. In complete contrast was the fast finishing Scott Hawker. He was moving with purpose and knew second place was less than two minutes ahead and in a world of pain. Yun of China had now moved into fourth and he too looked great. Heading down Kadamba, Dong Lee was now a clear leader in the women's race. She was far from home, but in a great position to close out the deal. The course for the North Face 100 is brutal, yet spectacular. It tests both the bodies and minds of all who take on the challenge. And regardless of where you are in the field, the sense of camaraderie and rewarding feeling of conquering this most epic and prestigious of Australian ultramarathons is something you'll never forget. It's not just about the elite athletes. This is an event for anyone that wants to see how far they can push themselves and come to understand what they're truly capable of. First place was an ecstatic Dylan Bowman. His relief, jubilation, and exhaustion were all on show. He'd taken on the course and many of the world's best off the runners and emerged victorious. In a surprise to all, Scott Hawker came flying through in second place, achieving his best result on the trails to date. He was three minutes down. He was three minutes down. Uh, I know. It's at nine. His first uh, through the field. Hey, how was it, mate? Oh, uh, good, yeah. Pretty, pretty solid day all around. Um, yeah, just felt strong at the end of back half. My whole plan for the day was to play it easy until the hospital, and I knew what I had to do from there, so... Yeah, there's um, a bit of toing and froing with me and a couple of Chinese guys. They were, one guy just went flying down, down Kadamba like I wasn't even moving. Stuck with him for a week and I thought, oh man, this isn't going to end well, so I just let him go. I think he got a couple minutes ahead and then just caught both the uh, Chinese, Yan and Jung, on the way up. And yeah, stoked. 
Yeah, it's just like. Yeah, so. In the very, very back of my mind somewhere, I thought sub nine if I ran the race of my life. And to actually do it, yeah, unreal. Actually, unreal. Right on sunset, Dong Li from China ran up the finishing shoot to take out the women's event in convincing fashion. She had run the perfect race. Results this year were astounding, with quality fields and aggressive racing making for fast times and close finishes, with internationals taking out both podiums. With the event coming to an end for another year, it would be 12 months before once again we see the trails of the Blue Mountains turned into a battlefield. And let's hope we see these two making a return.